Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today with both of my babies taking naps over there so I can talk to you about some exciting bookish news, which is that Maggie O'Farrell, the author of Hamnet, which was the winner of the Women's Prize for Fiction, has a new book coming out this year. I don't usually do reactions to publisher announcements like this. Typically, this is something I would have covered in my most anticipated reads of 2022 and just left it at that. But we are a ways away from me doing a sort of mid-year check-in on my most anticipated reads and seeing if there was anything coming out in the latter part of the year that I would like to add to that list. And I'm also really excited about this. So I wanted to talk about it. And it's my channel, so I figured, why not? I will do that. Now, if you're wondering why this is such exciting news, I already mentioned it, and that's Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. Her last novel, Hamnet, a novel of the plague, which, again, won the Women's Prize. I believe it was shortlisted... No, it was not shortlisted for the Booker. It was seen as a, something of an omission for that. And it's a fantastic book. I read it. It was one of my favorite reads of that year, which was 2020. This is actually an interesting year because two out of my three top books from 2020 are from authors who are releasing books again in 2022. Of course, now Maggie O'Farrell has become the second, but Douglas Stewart, who wrote Shuggy Bain, also has a book coming out this year, which is Young Mungo. Both of those books lost out to Song of Solomon, which was my favorite read of 2020, but are still fantastic books. And actually, now that I think about it, Toni Morrison released a new book this year. She obviously died a few years ago, but they released a short story of hers. I, I believe it's a short story in a, a book form. I can't think of the name of it, but yeah. Big year for authors from my top three <laughs> books of 2020. I should check out the rest of the top five or the top 10 to see if any of those authors have new books coming out. And this was something of a surprise because I'm, I'm not too surprised that Douglas Stewart has a new book coming out. And he has mentioned that he was working on Young Mungo at the time he won the Booker Prize for Shuggy Bane. And I assume Maggie O'Farrell was already working on her new book at the time this was published. But given that she does a lot of historical works, and I don't think she's released books that quickly before, I thought it was going to be a while before we had another book by her. If you are unfamiliar with Hamnet, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I don't know where you've been. <laughs> but this was a novel about Shakespeare's wife. Although Shakespeare is a character in the book, he is never explicitly named. It focuses the story much more on his wife and the death of his son Hamnet and how that potentially shaped him into uh, the, the space where he wrote his most famous play, arguably, Hamlet. But it's much more about the wife, and it's about grief. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book, which made me very curious to read more by Maggie O'Farrell. I have not yet. I had honestly thought that I Am, I Am, I Am would be the next book by Maggie O'Farrell that I would read, because I just thought it was going to be a while before she released another novel. Now I don't know. If I do I Am, I Am, I Am, it's going to have to be before the release of The Portrait of a Marriage, which is the book of hers that is coming out this year in September. September 6th is the exact date. So odds are the next book I read by Maggie O'Farrell is actually going to be The Marriage Portrait, a novel. And I am really looking forward to this book. Because the odds that I'm going to fit in I Am, I Am, I Am are kind of slim. It's a very different book. It's nonfiction. Uh, and so I'm kind of excited about the novel and the fact that it's coming out. It's it's going to be really high on my list of things to read for this year. I'm not going to add it to my most anticipated of 2022 list that I have already done. I'll link that in the description box down below because I, I don't want to make it an addendum to that. I'm probably just going to add it to my mid-year check-in on any other books that are coming out. So, But I want to talk about it now. And there is is not a whole lot of information. We do have the cover, which is stunning. Really beautiful. And I find it interesting that the way it's done with the lines cutting across the woman's face kind of mirrors the design of Hamnet, at least the one in the U.S. And I don't know if this is the same cover that's going to be the one in the U.K. I have not looked into that. But this seems to be the cover for Hamnet that most people didn't like. They preferred the U.K. cover of it. So it's interesting that this kind of parallels the cover of Hamnet in some interesting ways. Now, Entertainment Weekly released a an excerpt from the book and a couple of details from the plot. 
I'm not going to read that whole excerpt. It's not that much, that long, but I am going to read the plot description of the book as posted on the Penguin Random House website. I'll put a link to both um, the Penguin Random House information about the book and the Entertainment Weekly article that includes the excerpt if you'd like to read the whole excerpt. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read the blurb that they have released, talk about it a little bit, and then I might close by reading the opening of the excerpt, and that's it, and leave it at that. So what they say about the marriage portrait on the Penguin Random House website is, from the author of the breakout New York Times bestseller Hamnet, winner of the National Book Critics Circle Award, an electrifying new novel set in Renaissance Italy and centering on the captivating young Duchess Lucretia de Medici. Florence, the 1550s. Lucretia, third daughter of the Grand Duke, is comfortable with her obscure place in the palazzo, free to wonder at its treasures, observe its clandestine workings, and to devote herself to her own artistic pursuits. But when her older sister dies on the eve of her wedding to the ruler of Ferrara, Moderna and Reggio, Lucretia is thrust unwittingly into the limelight. The Duke is quick to request her hand in marriage, and her father just as quick to accept on her behalf. Having barely left girlhood behind, Lucretia must make, now make her way in a troubled court whose customs are opaque and where her arrival is not universally welcomed. Perhaps most mystifying of all is her new husband himself, Alfonso. Is he the playful sophisticate he appeared to be before their wedding, the aesthete happiest in the company of artists and musicians, or the ruthless politician before whom even his formidable sisters seem to tremble? As Lucretia sits in constricting finery for a painting intended to preserve her image for centuries to come, one thing becomes worryingly clear. In the court's eyes, she has one duty, to provide the heir who will shore up the future of the Farinese dynasty. Until then, for all of her rank and nobility, the new duchess's future hangs entirely in the balance. Full of the drama and verve with which she illuminated the Shakespearean canvas of Hamnet, Maggie O'Farrell brings the world of Renaissance Italy to jewel-bright life and offers an unforgettable portrait of a resilient, resilient young woman's battle for her very survival. Sign me up for all of that. I mean, one of the most intriguing things about Hamnet was the way in which it gave agency and story back to Shakespeare's life, who, wife, who is seen as a footnote in his life and who is a very mysterious figure. Uh, Hamnet is also very mysterious. You don't actually know how Hamnet died in Hamnet. Maggie O'Farrell imagines that he died of the plague, but which is a reasonable assumption. So I assume she's going to be using history to fill in the gaps of Lucretia's life as well. And if she does the same for Lucretia as she did for Shakespeare's wife, Anne Hathaway, or who is known as Agnes in this book, more commonly known today as Anne Hathaway, it's going to be fascinating because the portrait of Agnes in Hamnet is staggering and beautiful and I can't wait to see what she does with Lucretia. Now, if you are unfamiliar with history, I was unfamiliar with the story of Lucretia, but rather quickly on Twitter, a, a detail of her life was, it's, it's weird to say spoiled, because it's history, not a spoiler. But I found out what happens to her, and I, I'm not going to say that here, because if you don't know what happens to her, Maybe you don't want to go into the book knowing that. It's, again, one of those things where... Because we know what happens to Hamnet when we go into this book. And I think sometimes that created an expectation that people couldn't quite get past. And maybe you don't want it to be spoiled. Again, it's not really spoiling because it's history. She was a figure in life who lived in the 1500s. But I'm really looking forward to it. And from what I've seen on Twitter... It almost sounds a little bit like Hitchcock's movie Suspicion, which, if you're unfamiliar, is about a woman who marries this very um, charming man, I believe played by Cary Grant, and then over the course of the movie becomes convinced that he is trying to kill her. Fascinating. Fascinating, fascinating. And I love the idea of exploring a woman's role in history and how her agency is taken away from her and her worth is made secondary or dependent on the fact that she is able to marry well and produce a male heir. Heirs would have to be male, so that's kind of a redundant <laughs> way of putting that, but you know what I mean. Point being, the child not only did she have to bear a child, the child had to be male in order for it to be 
quote unquote, worth anything. And I, I just think that's interesting. Now, I'm not going to read the whole excerpt from Entertainment Weekly. I'm going to put that in a link down below if you'd like to check it out. But I will read just the first paragraph of it. It's not much longer than that, but I believe this is even the opening of the book, but I'm not sure. And the excerpt begins, Forteza near Bundeno, 1561. Lucretia is taking her seat at the long dining table, which is polished to a watery gleam and spread with dishes, inverted cups, a woven circlet of fur. Her husband is sitting down, not in his customary place at the opposite end, but next to her, close enough so that she could rest her head on his shoulder, should she wish. He is unfolding his napkin and straightening his knife and moving the candle towards them both when it, become, when it comes to her with a peculiar clarity, as if some colored glass has been put in front of her eyes, or perhaps removed from them, that he intends to kill her. She is 16 years old, not quite a year into her marriage. And we'll leave it at that. But, oh wow, I am really excited for this book. Really, really, really excited. I could say really, really, just a lot. Really excited for this book. And I don't want to say that anymore. Suffice to say, I'm looking forward to the book. And I would love to hear if you are as well, if you have thoughts about... How exciting it is that Maggie O'Farrell is releasing another book about this book in particular, about the subject matter. I think it's interesting that it's kind of seems to be staying in a similar wheelhouse to Hamnet in that it is about a woman in history who has been largely overshadowed by the powerful figures around her and sort of giving her her life and story back and imagining how it would have been or played out. And different enough that it doesn't feel like she's doing Hamnet all over again. I think it's a very interesting approach and novel, but I'd love to hear what you think about it in the description box down below. If you have not read Hamnet yet, allow this to be a PSA from me to let you know, please read this book. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I know there were some people who had um, issues with this book. I absolutely loved it. I know a lot of other people absolutely loved it. Some of the problems that people had came with the expectation based on what the book is about. So it will be interesting to see if the new book ends up falling into the same trap. But I think it will probably be more specific to Hamnet because Hamnet is not known himself, but his father is such a known entity in the Western world and the play Hamlet is such a known entity. So there was really no escaping the fact that you knew that Hamnet was going to die, his family was going to grieve, and it was going to lead to the creation of a play using an alternate spelling of his name that is also in certain ways about grief. So I'm not sure how many people are familiar with Lucretia's family. I know of them. I don't know a lot about them, which is one thing that will be interesting about this book in particular. And I'm looking forward to learning a lot more about them. If you are thinking of reading a different Maggie O'Farrell book, like for example, I Am, I Am, I Am, or you have read it, let me know in the comment section down below if you think I should jump into the, those or if I should do what I'm thinking I'm going to end up doing now and just wait for the book which is probably what's going to happen anyway. But let me know what you think of Maggie O'Farrell's other writing in the comment section down below because I would be fascinated and I definitely want to read more. I think she's a fantastic writer and one that I would like to explore further. So let me know other books by her that you would recommend in the comment section down below. And as always, I really appreciate your time and your thoughts and your comments, all of that stuff. Uh, you guys are, a, a, there's a wonderful community here on BookTube and I am always appreciative of that. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.